One company that has made significant strides in this area is the renowned tech giant, Google. Over the past decade, Google has made it a priority to improve representation at all levels. They've implemented a comprehensive strategy that includes regular audits of their workforce demographics, targeted recruitment efforts, and robust diversity and inclusion training programs. This commitment has led to an increase in women in leadership roles by 30% over the last five years. Yet, it's not just about gender. Salesforce, another tech behemoth, has taken a broad view of representation. They've launched numerous initiatives to increase the diversity of their workforce. These include partnerships with organizations like YearUp, a nonprofit that provides young adults with skills training and internships. As a result, Salesforce has seen a significant increase in the number of employees from underrepresented groups. The pharmaceutical giant, Merck, offers another compelling case study. Under the leadership of Kenneth Fraser, the company's first African-American CEO, Merck has become a model of ethnic and racial diversity. Fraser's dedication to representation has not only changed the face of Merck, but has also proven to be a successful business strategy, with the company consistently outperforming its peers. These examples highlight three key strategies for improving representation. First, regular audits of workforce demographics allow organizations to understand their current state and identify areas for improvement. Second, targeted recruitment efforts can help to attract a more diverse pool of candidates. And finally, diversity and inclusion training can help to create an environment in which all employees feel valued and included. Yet, driving meaningful change requires more than just implementing these strategies. It requires a commitment from the top. Leaders must not only talk the talk, but also walk the walk. They must make representation a priority, setting clear goals and holding themselves accountable for meeting them. In conclusion, improving representation is not just a moral imperative, it's also a business one. Diverse teams are more innovative, more productive, and better able to meet the needs of a diverse customer base. So the question is not whether we can afford to improve representation. The question is, can we afford not to? And as we step into the future, let us remember that change is possible. Google, Salesforce, and Merck have shown us the way. Now it's our turn to follow their lead and create organizations that truly represent the diverse world in which we live. Because after all, representation matters.